Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from yesterday's clash in the Speed Chess Championship. Hans Niemann versus Wesley So and uh, yes, yesterday definitely belonged to Hans Niemann as first he defeated Anish Giri in his match. Well, it, it, the match is not over but he won the day with, with a score of 7.5 to 4.5 in Hans's favor uh, and then he defeated Wesley So uh, in the quarterfinals of the Speed Chess Championship uh, going into the, the, the semifinals alongside Alireza Firuzja. So... Uh, uh, they, the two of them are waiting for their, their opponents. Hans is waiting for the winner of the match, Arjun versus Magnus, and um, uh, Alireza is waiting for the winner of the match, Nepo versus Hikaru. And these are the uh, results of the of the match. So it was uh, in the 5 plus 1 section, Hans dominated with a score of 5 to 2. Uh, 3 plus 1 section was 4 to 4, and the 1 plus 1 section was 4 to 4. So uh, in, in, interestingly, it was in the longer time format that Hans had the upper hand, which is odd usually the younger player has the upper hand in the in the faster time format but yeah this is like i said uh one of the games from the five plus one section let's check it out hunts with white opens with pawn to e4 we have pawn to e5 by wesley knight f3 knight to c6 and bishop to c4 the italian game is on the board we have knight to f6 the two knights defense and now uh pawn to d3 interestingly i uh, um uh, some months ago, Hans um, posted a photo of himself on Twitter with a book uh, of all the games Bobby Fischer ever played, and he uh, said that he was memorizing them by heart. So I went and checked how often does uh, F uh, did Fischer go d3 here, and how often he went for a knight to g5. And uh, during my research, I've uncovered two uh, most incredible miniatures played by Fischer never before seen on this channel. I don't think, probably, of course, people have shown them. I've never seen it, and I've never shown it, so you guys uh, are in for a treat. I'll try to post it today, if not, definitely tomorrow. Uh, but here we have pawn to d3, the so-called modern bishop's opening. We have bishop to c5 and pawn to c3, transposing into the main line of the Gioco Pianissimo. We have d6 and castles by both Hans and Wesley. We have rook, a, rook to e1 uh, and pawn to a5. Often I like to mention that if you go knight to g4, it doesn't really do anything as you can just play rook e2 and the rook will be very, very useful here. Uh, I know I, I repeat it quite a lot, but for newer players, uh, yeah, this might annoy you and then you might be thinking, okay, I have to go back to f1, uh, rook e2 just looks weird, but rook e2 is actually very nice. Uh, we have pawn to a5, stopping pawn to b4 as one always should, and pawn to h3. We have pawn to h6 and bishop to b3. This has all been played before, nothing new here. Uh, bishop to e6 challenging the bishop and bishop to a4 uh, putting pressure on the knight we have bishop back to a7 uh, and knight b to d2 and now there is a game where knight to e7 was played but here we have rook to b8 and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game hinting at the fact that if you capture and pawn captures yes you will mess up black's pawn structure but you're also giving up the b5 uh, to the black rook so here we have bishop to b5 uh, and knight to e7. We have pawn to d4 striking in the center, knight to g6 and knight to f1. The classic remaneuvering of the knight to e3 or g3 and then later on you can uh, gain some very nice control over uh, over some some important squares. E captures on d4, we have c captures and pawn to d5. We have pawn to e5 and knight to e4. And as you can see, uh, Hans is burning uh, much less time than Wesley. Wesley already down to 3 minutes on the clock. Knight g G3 and knight captures and g3 f captures and pawn to f6 so he did mess up hans's pawn structure in front of the king and is now going after hans's center to open up the diagonal of the dark square bishop king h2 uh, and bishop to f5 we have bishop to d3 countering the strong bishop f captures on e5 we have d captures on e5 and pawn to c6 wesley just improves his pawn structure he has the beautiful bishop pair and now it's time to uh, optimize the, the well, the, the rest of the pieces. First, Hans trades the bishop sons f5, bishop captures on f5, rook captures, and queen to d3. Now, with a tempo on the rook, knight to e7, defending, and bishop to f4. So, okay, uh, Hans, uh, Hans's position might be a bit more vulnerable, but then again, it's hard to say. The king is looking very safe here, and he does have the past e pawn for Wesley to worry about. Uh, queen to f8, and now pawn to e6, unleashing the... Uh, 
the, the dark square bishop on the rook on b8. And the problem is you don't really have a good square for the rook because the bishop really wants to come to d6. That's going to be a problem with the constant threats of uh, bishop captures followed by queen captures on f5. And if you go something like rook, um, well, if, if you go rook to c8, then bishop to d6. Definitely, if you first go rook to d8, then you can even challenge the rook with rook to uh, bishop to c7. And only then once the rook moves, you will again uh, enjoy this pin. So that's why Wesley just goes rook captures on f4. He says, all right, your, your bishop is way too powerful here. Uh, have an exchange. Uh, we have g captures on f4 and queen captures on f4, also gobbling up uh, a pawn while grabbing the exchange. We have g3 and queen to d6. And now Wesley's position is very nice if he can get a chance to get the rook into the game. If he can play rook to f8, rook to f6 and put pressure on the e6 pawn, then he's back. But if not, Hans is just winning here. And uh, well, but it requires one very specific move. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the absolute best move for Hans uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. And Hans is already lower on time, so you have only w a minute and 20 seconds to solve this one. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this beautiful, beautiful idea. And for those who, do, who just want to enjoy the show, it is night to E5. And looks looks like you shouldn't do this as you're giving up the e6 pawn, uh, which is your uh, you know your trump card as you're down the exchange. But uh, how do you how do you do this? Well, if queen captures on e6, then knight captures on c6 opens up an attack on the queen. So you have to capture with the queen. You cannot capture with the knight. And once the queen captures, you will capture on e7 with the rook. And now, uh, as Hans is up the exchange, he and the Wesley lost pretty much uh, any any counterplay that he had. This will be a very very easy victory, especially with the rook on the seventh rank. Hans already promoted it to a pig. It, 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 it's not going to be possible to defend this. Uh, so after knight e5, Wesley does play rook. To a rook, a rook to f8 and now knight to f7 attacks the queen queen to b4 and now rook to e2 uh, preparing to bring the other rook into the game and there is a very little wesley can do here he does go pawn to c5 and now rook to f1 by hans we have pawn to c4 attacking hans's queen queen to f3 and now rook back to c8 there was the danger of just capturing on h6 with check and picking up that rook so rook to c8 will help out with the advancement of the black pawns but now hans just goes in for the kill knight captures on h6 uh, nonetheless we have g captures queen to f7 with check king to h8 uh, and now rook to f6 threatening rook captures on h6 checkmate uh, but wesley finds a way out of it bishop to e3 a beautiful move by Wesley. I might even use this for the for the thumbnail, as it seems like uh, he's giving up a full bishop. But if rook captures, then queen to d2 check, and it's already not uh, easy to defend. If you don't, if you want to uh, avoid some sort of a perpetual, because if you allow queen captures, then the queen is already guarding h6. So you have to go into something like rook f2, attack the queen, and once queen captures, you again defend h6, and it's uh, well. Uh, should be enough for a draw. White is better, white is pushing, but should be enough for a draw. However, after bishop to e3, uh, we have pawn to h4. Hans doesn't fall for the trick. Uh, we have pawn to d4 by Wesley, and now rook to f3. And rook to f3, again, gives the back the advantage. Now, if Wesley finds a correct idea, he can get back into the game, but he doesn't. He played knight to g8. And with uh, 8 seconds on the clock, of course, it's impossible to find, but rook g8 would keep him in the game. Point being that after queen to h5, now threatening to pick up the rook and capture on h6, you can play rook to g7. And now you have a, a square for your king. And now if rook to f8 with check, look at this. Knight to g8 also defends the pawn, but not really. And there is not much you can do here. You could say, okay, the, the knight is pinned. I could maybe capture on e3 and then capture on h6. But no, if you capture, uh, just queen captures on f8. Let's not forget about uh, our, our good friend the queen also attacking the rook. So there's not much you can do. If rook to f7, uh, simply rook to, uh, queen to d6. Uh, I say simply, but this is in fact the only move that holds for black. So it's a, it's a fairly long theoretical line that never happened. Uh, but just wanted to, uh, to let you guys know. If rook captures king, captures queen f7, check king to h8. And uh, if anything, black is even better here. There's no way to do anything with white here. You have e7 square covered. So it's a very nice position. But like I said, it, 8 seconds on the clock. I only show it because I know you guys like uh, weird long lines. Uh, knight to g8 was played by Wesley. And now Hans just played queen to g6. 
uh, and it was in this position on move 38 that Wesley so resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Now there is no defense against rook to f7 followed by queen to h7 checkmate and if you try rook to c7 to stop it this way still just rook to c7 and the, uh, rook to f7 and queen h7 will be checkmate even if you trade doesn't matter then the pawn comes into the game threatening mate or mate and if you move the knight then you block the f8 square and you can just bring another queen into the game or a rook doesn't really matter rook here uh, knight here and queen captures will be checkmate so yeah, very very weird game but also a very nice one uh, could have gone either way uh you know uh the the engine bar was shooting back and forth uh, so it makes for a very exciting game to watch uh, live uh so yeah, if you haven't seen it you can check out the entire match uh, but uh yeah very nicely done by hans uh the the five plus one section belonged to him wesley fought back well in three plus one and one plus one but it was already too late but as the title suggests yesterday belonged to hans Niemann. Uh, so yeah that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh, hope you guys are looking forward to that bobby fisher miniature uh coming very very soon uh, and i was also very very impressed on how i stumbled upon it i've never seen it and then you know just checking up a certain line and then you find it i mean uh, you know uh, th there are there are worse the worse ways to, to begin your day uh so yeah, i would like to thank roger stone robert Aratun, Karl heinz haas martin georg paper can do it run for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world uh thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day